This is my second part to photography for birders. Um, we're going to continue from where we left off. So focus capability of lenses is an important thing to consider. There are two, two different kinds of focus ability. There's your external focus, which we find on <clears throat> older lenses, lenses that are typically less expensive. And uh, one of the problems they have is the slower autofocusing. Um, and sometimes you get uh, serious changes in uh, in focus when you zoom in and zoom out. Some some do, some don't. It's one of the things to pay attention to if you're buying a lens. Internal focus tends to be typical of newer and more expensive lenses. They lend themselves to very fast autofocusing, which is something that you want when tracking birds. Uh, and the lens length doesn't necessarily change when focusing. as another positive attribute. Minimum handheld shutter speed is something to think about and understand. If you do not have vibration reduction or vibration mitigation, what do you do? And how fast can I go? What what can I get for a, for a decent photograph? You've probably noticed that the more you zoom in, the faster the shutter speed has to be. Otherwise, you're going to get blur, not so much from the subject, but more from the fact that you are moving. That's what vibra vibration mitigation is all about. It helps to reduce that. So the rule is one over the focal length. And this is for a full-frame camera, just so you understand that clearly. So a 400 millimeter lens on a full frame requires a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second. If we're using an APA, APC, APS-C camera with a 1.5 crop factor, so that 400 becomes 600, which means our minimum shutter speed should be 1 600th of a second. Okay. So this is an example here of a uh, photograph with the 300 millimeter lens and a teleconverter. Uh, which gives us a, a relative focal length of 765 millimeters, but the shutter speed is only one uh, one one sixtieth of a second, and so it's too slow. It's it's two stops too slow. So you're going to get blur, and it's not because the bird is moving; it's because uh, the person shooting is moving. Well, that would be me. Um, in this case, this is a 300 millimeter lens at f4, and um, on an APS-C sensor camera, so it's 450 relative millimeters. Actual shutter speed is 1 500th of a second, so the two pair up very well. So even though there's no VR, the uh, photograph is taking place at such a speed that it, you get a decent shot. So vibration mitigation, uh, there's a variety of different names for it. Uh, VR is, is uh, Nikon, IS is Canon, OS is... Um, another third-party brand. Um, these things re reduce the motion of the camera okay, to outside forces. Typically you get three to four stops of improvement. I find four is pushing it. Uh, three typically it tends not to be so bad though. Um, doesn't work well on a tripod. So if you're using a tripod, typically you turn off your, your vibration mitigation, but not always if there's wind or if you're holding on to it or maybe using a monopod, then it's a good plan to use it. Um, if you're panning, that's another situation where you want to turn that off. Um, because I do a modest amount of kayaking, uh, I usually keep my VR turned on. Uh, one of the reasons is is that the boat's moving. Even if, if I feel I'm being relatively still, the fact is I'm really bobbing all over the place, and so it makes a huge difference. Uh, this was photographed at 1 60th of a second. Now, you can never do this handheld without VR. Uh, 1 80th of a second. And the blur here, um, it's a little bit of me moving and a little bit of the bird moving uh, together. There is some blur there, but really it's, it's pretty good. Okay, so I want to take a minute and talk about tripods and monopods. Tripods, of course, have three legs. Monopods only have one. Uh, one of the things to think about is, is how high is the tripod? Um, is there the ability to uh, change the legs uh, in terms of the angle? Uh, there are small, medium, and large types of heads. Uh, gimbals are very popular for, for big lenses. Uh, there's video heads, which only have two directional movements, and then there's standard heads. Uh, what kind of mount is it? There's the one-piece quick release and proprietary mounts. I 
cautious about the proprietary mount stuff because if you ever lose uh, the quick release then you're going to be in trouble because you can't find another one this is one of the reasons why sticking to brand names is not such a bad plan especially if quick releases are involved what's the tripod made of there's plastic aluminum and carbon fiber uh, how do the legs extend is it a twist lock or a lever lock and uh, uh, you got rubber feet are there prongs can you can you convert the rubber feet into prongs those are all good questions this is a photograph of me with a Manfrotto tripod and uh, it's got the ability to extend uh, the legs uh, beyond what you would normally be able to do this is very very useful in certain situations uh, it's a heavy tripod though it's a, it's a steel tripod so it weighs a ton oh, no it's aluminum sorry um, so carbon tripods this is my carbon tripod and uh, carbon fiber and I use it uh, when I'm camping and uh, uh, when I'm out traveling if I'm uh, on any kind of, of tourist type adventure uh, backpacking uh, I find this is fairly light and it allows me to to still have access the legs also uh, span out quite a bit and, and uh, it has a, quite a few nice features to it uh, this is a fellow I photographed who's using uh, quite an, uh, a pricey system but uh, uh, you can see there that he needs a lot of stability for that lens okay so this particular lens is a Canon 600 f4 uh, nice lens it's one of the things that at some some point in my life I would like to be able to purchase um, if uh, if it's windy or, or if uh, you're hanging onto it like this typically the VR is going to help if if it's perfectly still VR ac actually ends up being a problem uh, this is a photo I took using a tripod and uh, got the nice out of focus background remember that's called bokeh uh, this is another photograph uh, this was shot with a monopod they don't offer as much stability but it does give you the ability to shoot at slightly lower focal um, shutter speeds this is true especially if you happen to not have uh, any kind of vibration mitigation Okay, and these are all shots done with um, a tripod. Flash is another thing we need to discuss. Built-in flash uh, is not strong enough to go very far. It's, it's got a very low guide number, and so it's not going to make much of an impact on your photography, not unless you're very close to what it is you're doing. An external flash is something you really want to aim for. Uh, keep with the brand names. The OEMs if possible there are good third-party flash units but if you're not certain always stick with the the brand name uh, I always like a more powerful flash so usually somewhere between the medium and higher end units are going to give you the power that you're looking for these are photographs I did with uh, with flash and uh, some of these I was not very far away because these are birds in captivity and because they're in captivity they tend to be uh, very very cooperative um, this is fill flash where you don't need to use a flash but you choose to do so because it helps to improve the quality of the, of the photograph uh, in darker environments if you use flash you're going to get the ability to freeze action flash is fired around one ten thousandth of a second so it, it will completely freeze action uh, as opposed to a fast shutter speed which unless you're sh shooting uh, at ins insane numbers you're just not going to get the same kind of result if you do fill flash uh, with a lower shutter speed and the, the bird is moving you're going to get this funny combination of, of frozen and blur you can see the wings are blurred but there's also detail to them uh, same thing here slower shutter speeds are going to do this so uh, in a situation where you've got fairly dim light and you want to be able to use uh, fill flash uh, and you want to be able to to uh, use slow shutter speeds all with the lower ISOs that combination is going to give you shots like this in dark environments flash uh, especially with lower ISOs is going to give you that really black background um, not one of my favorite ways to take pictures uh, unfortunately there are times and places that you can use flash this was flash was prohibited here this, this is a, a kiwi 
And even though I'm at 51,200 ISO and a wide open aperture, I'm only getting a thirteenth of a second. And no flash is not permitted. So, uh, in situations where you're using flash in dim environments, uh, and yet there is, is uh, the background is quite close, you're going to find that you're going to get a uh, foreground and background that is going to be fairly evenly lit. Okay, this is a thought here on kit lenses. And some of you, uh, when you buy a camera, you get a kit lens. That's all, that's all you've got. You've got your camera and your kit lens, and you want to take bird pictures. How do you do that? So this is just a list of some of the various different lenses out there. Uh, you get the top ones that are built for APS-C sensor cameras, and you get the bottom ones that are full frame. These are common ones. There's other ones as well, but these are a lot of the common ones that you uh, would get on, on a purchase. So these are some photographs I've taken with some of these different lenses. And uh, um, over the years, I've, I've gotten better and better equipment, but it's, it's taken me a long time because I only make uh, small purchases. Anyway, I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Uh, you can see there my email and um, my uh, website. Uh, the book that I wrote is called Photography for Birders and Other Wildlife Enthusiasts. Uh, if you contact me, uh, it is available. Thanks for watching.